Good evening ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that I've noticed making a resurgence in recent months has been conspiracy theories of all sorts. As usual, YouTube seems to be awash with videos claiming that vaccines cause autism, that George Bush and Osama colluded to demolish the World Trade Center, and so on and so forth. Yet, to date, no one has done investigative work into some of the lesser known, more obscure conspiracy theories. And that is exactly what I'm going to be doing here tonight. Now, looking at the title of this video, you'd probably think that I'm talking about a vaccine and the usual tribe of Andrew Wakefield's magic autism, etc. You'd be wrong. What this video is about is a curious little conspiracy theory that surfaced around about four years ago in 2011 that seems to keep resurfacing every now and then about a top secret Department of Defense drug that if can effectively cure, in inverted commas, religious fundamentalism. Something which can control minds and rewrite DNA. Now in order to understand how such a thing might even be possible in the first place, we need to understand the quote unquote God gene and what the conspiracy theory really proposes. Part B, the God gene. So the God gene is a controversial piece of biology research to say the least. The idea is the brainchild of geneticist Dean Hamer. Now let me be the first to admit that I'm a world record ignoramus when it comes to biology and the physical sciences in general, so I'll just quote from the Wikipedia page and hope for the best. I'll also link to a bunch of other sources if you want to read up on this whole God gene idea yourself. The important thing here is that this is just the general backdrop to this whole fun vax conspiracy theory. Anyway, the hypothesis can be broken down into five separate points. Point one, spirituality can be quantified by psychometric measurement. Point two, the underlying tendency to spirituality is partially heritable. Part three, part of this heritability can be attributed to the gene VMAT2. Four, this gene acts by altering monoamine levels. And five, spiritual individuals are favored by natural selection because they are provided with an innate sense of optimism, the latter producing positive effects that are at either a physical or psychological level. In other words, the belief in a god or at least some form of spirituality is supposedly hardwired into our genes, and so Funvax was in some way able to alter people's genetic structure or to reduce this VMAT2 gene in some way, i.e. inhibit it, the theory goes that these people would lose their spirituality somehow. I'll let Dean Hamer himself explain this. So if indeed spirituality is the series of chemical reactions in the brain, and if it can be enhanced by certain types of drug, then naturally it follows that it could be inhibited as well, because for every activator there must be an inhibitor. And so I could easily imagine that under the right circumstances, the right stimuli or the right drugs or the right inhibitors might have some effect on a person's spirituality. However, the God gene hypothesis is also far from perfect and is also not without its critics, namely Carl Zimmer and the illustrious P.Z. Myers. Carl Zimmer points out that the research consists of one unpublished, unreplicated study and therefore these results are rather dodgy. And P.Z. points out that this gene is in fact a tiny, teeny pump, though not of the sort that one expects PZ is familiar with. So anyway, whether or not a vaccine to cure religious fundamentalism is even possible in the first place is something which in and of itself is up in the air. So now that we have this background reading out of the way, it's time to move on to the meat and potatoes of what the theory actually claim. Part C, Fun Vax. Now almost the entirety of the theory comes from only two sources. Number one, a video on YouTube which has been mirrored multiple times, and number two, a PDF document which outlines the Funvax program and some of the experiments that they supposedly were running. So before I say anything, I think I need to give you the information presented by both, just so that in the next section it'll all make sense at the very least. So let's start with the video. 
The four or so minute video consists of a lecture given by an unknown professor who we will come back to in a little while. He's ostensibly giving the lecture at a room in the Pentagon as the on-screen display attests. Also from the on-screen display we learn that this lecture took place sometime in 2005. The bulk of the lecture is simply the professor giving a lecture on this experiment where they expose people to Funvax and looking at the way in which Funvax reduced their levels of VMAT2 and made them less susceptible to religious experiences. Occasionally a slide from the presentation is overlaid over the screen to give us a closer look at the slides used in the presentation and this of course has some information next to it from the Department of Defense itself similar to the on-screen display information. Some of the attendees seem to have a military bearing and there are epaulettes visible on one of the audience members at certain points during the presentation. As the presentation rolls forward there are also occasional interjections from audience members. We have individuals, so, so, so let, let me complete. And the presentation wraps up with a bizarre discussion of putting the quote-unquote vaccine into flu shots that would then be given to Muslims in the Middle East to defundamentalize them. The short video finally finishes up with the idea that based on the data presented, the project is something which will be pursued by the Department of Defense. All very frightening stuff. Now to the document. The document is a 13-page PDF out of what is apparently a 30-page document. The document is supposed to be a 2007 quarterly report on the status of the Funvax project leaked out of the Department of Defense's files. The document starts on page 2 which is an introduction that sets out the objective of the project which is to create a viral vector which will inhibit VMAT2, i.e. Funvax. This page also sets out several experiments that they've done involving rhesus monkeys. Page 3 is blank. Page 3 and 4 are summaries of the experiments they carried out. In the first experiment, they tested 600 strains of virus on 1,200 laboratory mice. In the second experiment, they tested different ways of spreading the virus, including airborne and groundborne testing. In the third and final experiment, they tested the virus on rhesus monkeys. Results varied on whether the monkey was heterozygous or homozygous. The heterozygous ones lived normal lives, the homozygous ones basically committed suicide. Next is a summary of a group meeting on the 21st of the 3rd, 2007, where lots of evil plotting evidently took place. Pages 6 through 8 are a summary of the recommendations of the report. Most of these are pretty boring to do with the technical side of testing and so on and so forth. For recommendation 6, however, says that reductions in suicide bombing and increases in communications expressing discontent with religion, such as I assume Amazing Atheist videos, would be a sign that the virus was actually actually working in the Middle East. The biological indicators on page 7 are more paranoia feel, indicating that covert samples from things such as condoms and toilet paper could be taken to measure the virus's effectiveness. Page 8 contains an ominous mention of the alcohol inhibitor virus, something that the government is working on evidently. Pages 9 and 10 list the conclusions of the report. In particular, they lay out the fact that the virus in question is a strain of the vesicular stomatis virus and advocates the spraying of the virus to the air as being the most efficient method of dispersal. The final three pages are just appendices which I won't bother going through here. They're basically copied and pasted out of a medical product catalogue as far as I can tell and suffice to say it's all very terrible and dreary stuff. The government spraying chemicals over innocent Muslims to make them lose their faith is awful if only it were true. So now that I've dealt with the document in the video, we're going to move on to the debunking part, which is actually the fun bit. Part D, debunking fun facts. So now that I've shown you the sources, it's time to show you how both of these sources are completely fake and therefore how the entire theory falls apart. So firstly, once again, the video first and then the document. In order to do this most efficiently, I'm going to do things as a numbered list. Number one the audio dub. So this one comes from a YouTube user called HTFTTF. What the hell? Anyway, in their video they slow down the original video and show an apparent issue with the audio not being synced with the video. I'll illustrate this for you now. 
just taxed <coughs> what you see just taxed <coughs> what you see is just taxed <coughs> what you see is this has led to the theory that the video was basically dubbed over an original presentation now I'll get to this idea later but I'd like to take a second to state here that it doesn't matter whether this was either dubbed over or just simply an original presentation or not the fact is that the video would still be fake in either case Two, the brain scan. A more obvious and much more thorough debunking that basically sunk this theory comes from Nick West of the Metabunk forums. He simply popped one of the slides from the presentation into Google Images and came back with a hit on a paper. The brain shown in the Funvax presentation actually was lifted from a 2010 paper that appeared in the journal Neurology dealing with the effects of meth addiction on a woman's brain. All you have to do is compare the B slide and from the paper to both of the Funvax Convax slides and you can see it quite clearly. Anyway, seeing as this image was created at the earliest 2009 or 10, the date on the presentation is false. In fact, it's off by 5 years or so. So if the date is false, then all of the other information on screen is false, i.e. this doesn't really take place at the Pentagon, and so the entire video is pretty much debunked right there. Number 3, this bloody graph. So one of the things they teach you when you get a degree in science, or so I assume, is learning how to make graphs that aren't entirely confusing and meaningless. This graph is useless for two main reasons. Firstly, what group A and B are even supposed to be is really unclear. Is A religious fundamentalists and B normal people, or what are they? I mean, you can assume which group is which from the title of the graph, but as the saying goes, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. And secondly, which is a far bigger problem with this graph, is that the left axis is meaningless. It's supposed to be a relative percentage of something, but the something is completely unclear. In order for the values to be expressed as a relative percentage, they need to have a benchmark which they are being measured against. For example, if I had a benchmark of say 10, and I wanted to make a similar graph, then a value of 11 would read as 110%. However, here we have absolutely no clue what these graphs are even supposed to be measuring. So they are completely useless. Now bearing in mind the context here as well, if one graph is a brain of a fundamentalist and one is the brain of a normal person then what is the benchmark is it someone who lies between the two somehow is it some guy who goes to church once a month i don't know the point is that this graph isn't exactly forthcoming when it comes to representing information in an easily understandable way number four the confused experiment so the biggest thing cueing you into the fact that this is a hoax besides the fact that the brain scan was actually stolen from a real study and that the dates are wrong is that the exact same diagram diagram here is being used to show two completely different experiments. The first was an alleged experiment where a quote-unquote fanatic and a quote-unquote normal brain are read a religious text. This graph is supposed to show us how the different areas of the brain light up when read the text. In this case, uh, these individuals were, were read a religious text. Uh, this individual uh, light lit up um, the, the right middle frontal gyrus uh, shown here. And uh, that's a part of the brain that's associated with theory of mind. Uh, it's a part of the brain that, that uh, has to do with intents and, and beliefs and, and desires. Uh, in contrast, in marked contrast, here's an individual who would uh, not particularly uh, self-describe as, as religious. And when they're read a religious text, <coughs> what you see is that this part of the brain called the anterior insula lights up. This is a part of the brain that's associated with with disgust or displeasure on hearing something. The second experiment though uses this exact same image to show us how the VMAT2 gene was reduced in the sample by the virus. The virus would immunize against this VMAT2 gene and that would, would have the effect that you see here which is it's essentially to turn a fanatic into a, a, a normal person. So then, which is it? Showing us the difference in VMAT2 or showing us the reduction in VMAT2? How about neither? What makes a lot more sense is that this was a dub slash edit job over an original experiment. As I said before, this is clearly two regions of the same brain being highlighted. I mean, they're even separately labeled. This makes the earlier graph as well make a lot more sense because whatever was being measured is being measured over two different areas of the same brain rather than two brains. I mean, why would any scientist measure for the exact same chemical in two different parts of two different people's brains. In any case, 
The point here is that the whole of the experiment makes no sense and it just adds to the obvious fact that the video is entirely fake. So now that we've debunked the video, what about the document? Well, seeing as the video is obviously fake, then there's no reason to believe that the document is going to be real, seeing as they come from the exact same source, something which I'll get to in a second. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the document because it's pretty much a series of assertions which you can just call the Hitchens Law on. Descriptions of meetings and experiments and conclusions which all have no other basis other than appearing in the document itself. Also, the final few pages are lifted from a product description for products sold by a biological firm ATCC and I'll link a similar brochure down below. It's not anything even remotely exciting. The only thing that is really worth mentioning is what the VMAT2 inhibiting virus actually is. The virus is supposed to be a strain of the vesicular stomatis virus as I said before. Very scary name to be sure. So what does the virus do? Well it's actually a virus that normally gives cows foot and mouth disease and is something relatively common in labs. The biggest stretch here though is that the document claimed that the Funvax researchers have developed a strain of this virus, heretofore completely unknown and completely unobserved by science, which instead of spreading through the normal vector of blood sucking insects, can actually be transmitted through the air by spraying it somehow. And not only that, but this magical strain of this virus not seen by science before can actually also inhibit VMAT2. Anything's possible I guess, but this just doesn't make any sort of real sense given the information that I've read about this virus. Anyway, so there we have it, a fake video and pretty much a fake document as well. So you'd think that that's that, I mean the, the, the myth's been debunked, there is no government spraying program of mind control vaccine. Well, actually, no. There's actually quite a bit more to it. Part E. The plot thickens. So this conspiracy theory doesn't get really interesting until you start tracing it back to its source. Joey Lombardi. Who is Joey Lombardi? Well, your guess is as good as mine. If you trace the conspiracy back all the way, you find a blogger blog called Stop Fun Vax Now created by Lombardi in early 2011, and this was the first known post on Fun Vax. The post itself seems to have been removed though, and this in all likelihood is fake too because the text of the post has simply been replaced with a large red capital letter message instead of the whole post actually being removed like Google did it. The post links into the first video Joey released as well which you can watch for yourself down below. Shortly after the blogger site popped up, a WordPress site popped up and this was Conspiracy Central for Fun Facts during 2011 and 2012 when the conspiracy theory was in full swing. This site was not run by Joey Lombardi but instead by a group of people claiming to be in contact with him. The first post on all of these sites echoed the exact same allegations that the government was creating a vaccine to quote unquote cure religious fundamentalism and either were testing it or were actively using it. However as time marched on the conspiracy theory didn't actually pick up a lot of steam and so the video and the document were both released to an apathetic public in June 2000. There is also an interview with Joey Lombardi who claims to have gone AWOL from a US Army unit called Combat Camera in order to release this information. Then in September 2011 it was reported on the WordPress site at least that Joey had been arrested in Argentina bringing the whole saga to an end. Of course, there's no mention of this arrest of a US citizen in a foreign nation which tends to become an international incident in any news source out there. Anyway, after this post, quote unquote Joey was never heard from again. I guess the US Department of Defense must have hushed up the arrest and then finished him off in one way or another without DMCAing any of the YouTube videos which have been up for a straight four years despite having the power to remove Joey's blog post. How very interesting. I should also mention here that according to funvax.com, Joey was never registered as a marine or any sort of soldier for that matter and he doesn't appear on the records. It appears for all intents and purposes that Joey Lombardi never existed in the first place. But of course Joey isn't the only mysterious stranger involved in this affair. What about the quote unquote Funvax scientist? Here he is in the teaser for the Funvax documentary which is something I'll get to in a second where he says the following. It would be quite useful to e eliminate some of the fanatical um, religious nuts in the world. 
Very ominous indeed. The problem is that this raises more questions than it answers. Is this guy this guy? It's hard to tell from these two videos. Also, according to the website for the documentary on fun facts, which is something we'll get to in a second, the video itself is a fake and was dubbed over another lecture, and they even found the original professor. So then why would you ask the guy whose video was dubbed over to be in the documentary when he has no clue what fun facts was even about? The fact of the matter is that the so-called quote-unquote fun vax scientist is just another person in this whole thing that's suspicious as hell. The final piece of the puzzle though is the fun vax documentary itself. The fun vax documentary was a kickstarter project to fund an investigative documentary into the whole fun vax thing. The website for the documentary is funvax.com and several bits of footage have been put up on YouTube ostensibly by the film's director Ryan Harper. Who is Ryan Harper? Well, he's known for only making one film and one film only circulation which didn't have great reviews. He seems to have put quite a lot of effort into the movie itself, even enlisting the help of Noam Chomsky, who appears to be in every documentary known to man anyway at this stage. In any event, even after all the stops were pulled out with the Funvax WordPress site breaking radio silence to show the Kickstarter, by late 2012 the project had failed to make the 10k it was going for and basically it was over right there. And most telling of all, ever since the Kickstarter failed, no one has even heard any more fun facts until Mike Adams decided to play dustbin archaeologist and brought the crusty old theory back into the light. Not to mention the fact that Ryan Harper registered funvax.com months before the video and document actually surfaced. So finally, what's my opinion on this? Well, if I was a betting man, I'd say that all of this smells like an elaborate hoax cooked up by a director who has a company that specializes in creating viral videos and his last movie wasn't a stellar success in order for him to get funding to make a movie dedicated to tearing down his own hoax. Now this would be slander if it was an accusation, but it isn't. It's an opinion. Take it or leave it. Part F. Conclusion. So, at the end of the day, after all the sources and all the information, where are we left? Well, with the simple fact that there is no real evidence that the Funvax program ever existed in the first place, and that it is clearly a hoax. Regardless of whether or not it was a hoax as part of the world's most elaborate Kickstarter scam or not, is not as important as the fact that it was completely false. However, it is also possible to debunk the whole entire thing in just one question, a perfectly logical question which nobody has seemed to ask. You see, most of the coverage of the conspiracy theory calls this an aerosolized vaccine, dropping a vaccine on people. But here's the question, how is this even a vaccine to begin with? A vaccine is the solution designed to fight a particular disease. And the last time I checked, religion isn't a disease. In fact, in the actual document itself, Funvax is referred to as a virus that inhibits FEMAT2. So then obviously what we're talking about in Funvax isn't a vaccine at all. In fact, it's the opposite. It's a biological weapon. And it makes no sense for the Department of Defense to call it Funvax when it isn't a vaccine in the first place. Now, the document does talk about putting the biological weapon into vaccines, but that wouldn't make it a vaccine. That would just make it a chemical weapon hidden in a vaccine. So, whomever came up with this hoax, it's clear that their intent was to ignite panic in a certain demographic here by playing into both their fear of vaccines and their fear of religious persecution at the same time, or government brainwashing, depending on who you're talking to. Oh, and one final thing I want to say. As Snopes notes, this whole entire Funvax story does bear an uncanny resemblance to the plotline of the movie Serenity. So there you have it, one internet conspiracy hoax down, 10 million more to go. I've been your host and humble narrator DA, thank you for subscribing and as always. Good night and good luck.